found herself on this little patch of sand halfway between Australia and Indonesia. here for about a week and as you guys know we're just surviving from the ocean so at some point today we've got to catch a fish. Yes, bro, a fish. It, yes. There's crazy big teeth and they smash up your lures. side of the boat is broken into numerous pieces. Yeah, this is just not ideal. Oh, shit. Good morning and welcome back to another episode. <laughs> we can't see a leaf back home yet, but today is our last day. Couldn't sleep last night because a turtle came up again. <laughs> she buried my wetsuit here. So she dug the nest there. Flicked this hand and my <laughs> wetsuit. Oh. Is it toy rope to get back home? My other <laughs> There you go. Yeah, we might have to have a bit of a treasure hunt oh. before we leave. So yeah, this morning we're just parking up, going for a swim and going to catch a feed for the trip back home, hopefully. Good stuff. Yeah. Let's do it. What a mermaid. Kimberley and coastal Pilbara communities have been urged to prepare for heavy rain and severe winds. Residents in some parts of Western Australia's north are this morning on alert. Post heavy rains and gale force winds, it will develop and intensify and likely cross between Broome and Port Hedland. We received a radio call from the mothership saying there was a huge storm on its way and that we needed to leave ASAP to try and beat it back to mainland. It quickly became clear that the storm and wild weather we were trying to avoid had arrived earlier than anticipated. Ferocious winds had to be over 50 knots. The large swell from the southwest was being hit by winds from the northeast, resulting in the most upset and rough seas I've ever seen. As the sun set on the rough horizon, we knew no one would be getting any rest. The crew had all retreated somewhere safe inside, no chance of sleep or food, but doing their best to hang on to something sturdy as the boat is being thrown around. At 1am, the skipper on watch yelled out, We've lost a tender. We turned back and spent 30 minutes looking, but in these conditions, we're unable to find it. Surrendering this boat lost at sea. 
2 a.m. and 90 miles off the coast, in the middle of a ferocious Indian Ocean, our worst nightmare. The salty dingo's toe point snaps. The captain confirms with me what I already know to be true. There's no way we can re-pick up the salty dingo, but I'm not leaving my boat. I ask how far off we are. 90 miles. I reckon I can make it. He disagrees, but I'm not leaving the salty dingo. I know I don't have enough fuel, so we throw a few jerry cans overboard and then I make possibly the stupidest decision of my life. Jumping overboard into the rough, pitch black seas and swimming as best as I could for the salty dingo. My focus then shifted from saving the salty dingo to the fact that I've now got to be prepared to actually save myself. Once on board the dingo, I've got two main concerns. One, which is rather ironic. The plastic we picked up now spilling into the bilge would sink this boat in a matter of seconds if it clogged the bilge pump. Number two being a guarantee that at some point I'm gonna run out of fuel. And when that happens, the boat's gonna stop and go side onto the swell, likely swamping it completely. The other risk is that water then enters the fuel system. If that happens, it's all over. I didn't think I'd get like this, but as the horizon turned a shade of orange just before sunrise, I actually felt a few tears run down my cheek. It meant I could now slightly see where the waves were coming from to brace myself as they crashed over slightly easing the torment. I also could now see Fran's silhouette on board the mothership hanging onto the rail and vomiting overboard. Poor Fran must not have blinked all night. So it's at some point last night, about 3 a.m., the, um, the toe point on the salty dingo snapped. And basically it meant either we left the salty dingo there or had to jump in and um, yeah, swim out to the boat. But it now means we've got a long, long way to go of this open ocean. The ocean could be a wild beast and I'm really, really seeing it in its full force at the moment, unfortunately, and it's it's not going to let up anytime soon. I've uh, got probably another 12 hours of this until we get any sort of protection. Got a couple of jerry cans at the back. Hopefully I've got enough fuel. See how we go. The charts show there's nothing to offer any protection. No islands, no sandbanks, no rocks. Nothing until we reach the mainland of Australia. All right, the big boat that was towing us home has lost one of the other tenders it was towing as well. So it wasn't just our boat now lost two up or theirs. Uh, that's given me some time to put a wetsuit on and um, get ready for, for the next few hours. Last night there, it was the most terrified I've ever been of the ocean. This is just not, not a fun place to be at the moment. There's waves, huge waves crashing down all around the boat and yeah, in, last night in the dark, it was just a, a horrible place. And even now, just the, the hard thing to, to kind of keep geeing myself up about is that there's no finish line nearby. This is it's gonna be like this for another eight hours or so until we can hopefully get into some shelter of land. But uh, I'm gonna go see if the, the big boat needs my assistance at all to, to secure this tender back on. After 12 hours and 90 miles in the salty dingo, we finally make it back to safety. I've never been so relieved to be back on dry land. We made it, salty dingo. In these types of situations, there's only a certain amount of footage you can actually get. So to further paint the picture, I thought I might actually share uh, my diary entry. Um, this was never meant for the eyes of YouTube, but it might be able to paint the picture a little bit better um, than I can. Sometime after 2 a.m., my worst fear. There's a part of me hoping what I just saw was a nightmare that I could wake up from, but a wave of salt water spray to the face quickly vanishes this thought. 
The dingo jumped a wave to the left and then was jolted in the other direction, snapping its tow point. This is the tow point I had custom engineered and made for this trip. It was supposed to be unbreakable, but apparently not. In a matter of seconds, I'm up on the rail and looking down at the rough seas and jump overboard. It was at this moment I wondered if I'd just made a horrible mistake. I saw how hard it was to find a boat in these conditions, so if the dingo goes down, what chance have they got of finding me? Zero. I'm completely at the mercy of the ocean and I can't imagine a more inhospitable place on earth. You wanted adventure, Jack, but if you survive this one, you need to scale it back a bit, you bloody idiot. At this point, I'm of the belief that I made totally the wrong decision, but I'm so happy to be safe and feel I might have cheated death on this one. One hell of an ordeal, but the salty dingo lives on, albeit a little bit battered and bruised. I'm sure there's something wise and philosophical to be learnt from this, but once again, I'm just uh, I'm not quite sure of it yet. It might come to me in, um, in future years. All right, we got some bad news and some good news. Do yeah. you want to start with the bad news? Yeah, so bad news is obviously the Salty Dingo is going to need some extensive repair work after that trip and if you would like to be part of that process, the link to do so is in the description and for those people we'll keep you updated with like behind the scenes photos of, uh, of how that comes along. Yep. Thank you in advance. Good news. <laughs> Good news is that if you're not sick of us, we're going to put some extra content on a new channel called the Castaway Stricken Friend. So please go subscribe and uh, we're gonna keep posting on this existing channel. So you're gonna have, you're gonna double dip. Yeah, Strick and Fran coming at you <laughs> from two different channels every Sunday morning. So hopefully you don't get sick of us. Yeah. <laughs> subscribe to both and we'll, uh, we'll see you there. Yeah, thank you, thanks for watching. See you guys.